Hello, students. Welcome back to another episode of Principles of Micro. We're looking at how markets work in Chapter 3. We introduced supply and demand. We also saw when they shift. We worked through one example of shifts, and now we're going to explore several more because this is a very, very critical skill, even, I might say, the most important thing you'll get out of this course. So here's another example. Let's say that due to improvements in technology, it is cheaper to make printers. How does it affect the market for printers? So go through the same five-step process we had last time. Try to work through that problem on your own first. Pause the video and when you're ready, press play. All right, so I'll assume you have done that. So we gotta go to our list of which factors shift which curve. So said, we said we had improvements in technology. So technology was on our list of supply shifters that we developed in an earlier episode. So now we know which curve shifts. The next step is to figure out which direction will it shift. So if it's now cheaper to make printers, that's going to lead to an increase in supply of printers. So now because of this reduction in costs, it could be worthwhile to the firm to build new factories and pay workers overtime. They can still make a profit because they're saving money because of the technology. So supply is going to expand, supply is going to shift out. So now we can draw our picture. So here's demand and here is the original supply curve S0. Once supply shifts out, we're going to move here to S1. That's our graph. Next step is to find how is equilibrium price and equilibrium quantity affected? So equilibrium is where supply meets demand. That used to be up here. So that was our old price. Once supply shifts out, that's going to be down here now. So prices are going to go down. Now let's talk about quantity. Originally, equilibrium is over here, so the quantity was this high. Now the new equilibrium is going to be at this point, so equilibrium is going to be over here, so we should see an increase in quantity. So that means that prices should go down and quantity should increase. Sure enough, that has happened for printers in the last several decades. It used to be that printers were very expensive and most people would not have their own printers. As technology has progressed, printers have gotten a lot cheaper and now a lot of people have their own printers at home. So quantity went up, price went down. So that's the printer example. Oh, we have another printer example. We already know what happens when technology improves and what does to the effect on printers. My next question is, how will it affect the market for ink? So go work to that same five-step process. Pause the video here while you work that out. All right, let's look, go over the answer. So we gotta figure out which curve is shifting. Go back to that list of which factors shift which curve. Ink is going to be a related good. So in an earlier episode, we said related goods can be substitutes or complements. Substitutes for things like Macs and PCs. You buy one, but not the other. Complements were things that you buy together, hot dogs and hot dog buns. Well, printers and ink sound a lot like complements to me. For a printer to be useful, you have to have ink. For ink to be useful, you have to have a printer. So they're complements. We said that complements 
uh, kind of related goods, and that shifts the man. So now we know which curve is shifting. The next step is to determine the direction of the shift. So you got to know, is the man going to shift out, or is it going to shift back in the market for ink? We had reasoned through some similar problems earlier. So we know that when printers get cheaper, people buy more printers. We just established that in the earlier example. So if you're buying more printers and ink is a complement, then you're also going to want to buy more ink. So demand for ink should increase. That means that demand is going to shift out in the market for ink. So now we can draw a picture illustrating that. We start out over here on this old demand curve, and here is supply. So when demand shifts out, now we have this new demand curve, D1, that's going to be out over here. Our picture then can then tell us what's happening to price and what's happening to quantity. So old equilibrium is back here. That's where old demand meets supply. The price is going to be this high. Our new equilibrium is going to be out here. That means our price is going to be at this level. That looks higher, so price is going to go up. Now let's talk about quantity. So quantity starts out over here in our old equilibrium. In our new equilibrium, we're up here, so that quantity is going to be at this level. So quantity should go up as well as price, and that's what our graph shows. So here's old quantity, there's new quantity, old price, new price. So that wraps up our other printer example. Let's go through another application. Let's say an airline company goes bankrupt and leaves the industry. I wrote these slides a while ago, but this could actually end up being quite timely. So the coronavirus, a lot of people don't want to travel, so airline companies are hurting right now. I haven't heard of any airline companies going bankrupt yet. I think they got bailed out, but maybe this could happen. So my question for you guys, if an airline company goes bankrupt, how is that going to affect the price of airfares? So what's the price of a ticket going to be? And what's going to happen to the quantity of tickets? So go through our five-step process and pause the video while you work that out. Okay, let's go over the answer. So which curve shifts? Go to your list of factors. So airlines are supplying um, transportation, so they're on the supply side. If there is one company that's going bankrupt, that means there are now fewer firms in this industry. That's number of firms, and number of firms shift supply. So now we know which curve is shifting. Step two, find the direction of the shift. So you got that with step one, now we're on step two. So does supply shift out or supply shift back? So there are fewer firms now. That means there's going to be fewer airplane flights. So there should be fewer tickets. That means less supply. So supply should shift back. We now have enough information to draw the graph. So here's old supply, S0. And new supply, which shifts back, is S1. So at any given price, we're now supplying fewer flights than we were previously. So next step is to find effect on price. And lastly, we'll do effect on quantity. So as always, we look where does old supply meet demand. That's going to be right over here. We go and trace that over to our axis to find out what the price is. So price should be around this level. Now we look at our new equilibrium. New equilibrium is up here. 
So price will be up there. That's a higher price than we had earlier. So price is going up. We also see a decrease in quantity. Quantity starts out being over here. Once a firm leaves the industry though, there's less supply, so quantity is going to go down. So we expect that when a firm goes bankrupt and leaves the industry, we'll see higher prices for the firms that survive and there should be a lower overall quantity. Again, we'll have to watch and see if some airline companies end up collapsing in this recession. All right, another example. So I guess it was written pre-COVID. Well, it was written when COVID was getting started. The economy was still growing in China at the time. So incomes are rising there and we can look at how that affect the market for cars. So Go through the same five-step procedure and pause the video until you have the answer. Same process, we look at which factor shifts which curve. A growing economy in China is going to lead to higher income for Chinese people. So income shifts demand. Now you have to figure out the direction of the shift. We said earlier that with income, it can depend upon if the good is a normal good or an inferior good. So we said normal goods are ones that you buy more of when your income goes up. Most goods are normal goods. Our example was restaurants. Inferior goods are ones that you buy less of when your income goes up. The standard example was ramen noodles. So once you're rich enough to find to afford something nicer, you're probably not going to eat ramen noodles anymore. So which kind of good are cars? Cars sound like a normal good. It seems like if you have more income, you'll buy more cars than you would have if you are poor. So if you're a college student, you don't have a whole lot of income right now, you might have no cars at all, or at most one car. Sometime later, when you have a family and a career, you might have two cars, maybe even three cars. So as income goes up, you buy more cars. So in China, income is growing, so we expect them to buy more cars. That should shift the demand curve out. So here's our graph. Old demand is back here. Once income rises, demand is going to shift out to D1 out there. Price starts out being back here, and then it goes up to this level. So price rises. Quantity is originally going to be over here. In the new equilibrium, quantity is going to be out there. So quantity should go up as well. We expect to see an increase in both price and quantity when incomes rise. That's how the market for cars in China should be affected. Let's talk about another example. So this slide was written back in the times when the coronavirus was a big deal in China, but had not really reached the rest of the world yet. I was still holding face-to-face -face classes at the time that I was designing this slide. So when the coronavirus is spreading in China, how do you expect that to affect the market for airline flights to China? So go through the same procedure as before, pause the video, once you think you have the answer, press play. All right, so this will affect consumer tastes. So consumers are a lot less willing to go to China when there's a pandemic over there. So that's a consumer taste shift and consumer tastes are on a list of factors that shift the demand curve. Direction of the shift. So people are less willing to fly to China during the pandemic, so demand is going to shift back. That lets us draw our picture. So here is old demand, D0, and then we shift to D1, new demand. 
So all that glimmer is going to be up here, and this will be the price for a flight to China during, say, January of 2020. And then it shifts down over here. So price is falling when you go to the new equilibrium. And then quantity is also going to fall. So it starts up being over here in the old equilibrium, and then it's going to be down there. So unsurprisingly, firms were canceling flights to China and airlines were just canceling the entire flight because there are so few customers that flying a big airplane over there was just not profitable. And also you'd see discounts on tickets over there during January of 2020. So price falls, quantity also falls. So that wraps up our section on single shifts. Now, sometimes you get scenarios where both curves can shift at the same time. We'll talk about that in our next episode.